hemerythrin abbreviated as HR. It is another oxygen binding protein, a non-heme iron protein. We call it as a non-heme since the metal atom is not surrounded by the porphyrin which we call it as a prosthetic group. Though the name contain heme, it is only named after the Greek word for blood. It is no more valid now. It is a bimetallic center. Each subunit has two metal atoms at the active site. Unlike hemoglobin where any subunit will have only one metal atom, so we call it as a monometallic center. In this case, it is a bimetallic center. The number of subunits can range from a monomer, dimer, trimer, tetramer and even octamer was also found. The molecular weight of each subunit was found to be about 13,500 daltons or 13.5 kilodaltons. The single unit is called as a myohemerythrin. It is a monomer. Hemerythrin can be found in some marine invertebrates. And though the number of subunits could range from monomer to an octamer, yet the cooperativity was found to be pretty weak. The Hill's constant is around 1.1 to 2.1. Also there is no Bohr effect that is found. What we have seen in the case of hemoglobin is not found here. There are two different variants of hemerythrin depending upon the ligand binding. One is called as a deoxyhemerythrin where the metallic centers are not bound to the dioxygen. The another one is called as a oxyhemerythrin where one of the metal centers is bound to the dioxygen. Let us see the geometry of uh, both the deoxy as well as oxyhemerythrin. Since it is a bimetallic center, for convenience I am labeling the irons as A and B in both the cases. In deoxyhemerythrin, iron A is surrounded by six ligands hence the coordination number depending upon the donor atoms is fixed as 6. Out of these 6, 3 are nitrogens of histidines, 1 is oxygen of a hydroxo bridge. The 5th and 6th coordination sites are occupied by oxygens of aspartate and glutamate which act as endogenous bridges between the two iron centers. So the geometry is approximately octahedra around iron A. When it comes to the iron B, it is surrounded by five ligands, each one being a monodentate one, so the coordination number is five. Two of them are histidine nitrogens, one of them is an oxygen coming from the hydroxo bridge and the fourth and fifth coordination sites being the oxygens from aspartate and glutamate. The geometry around iron B is approximately square pyramid. In the case of oxyhemerythrin, around iron A, the geometry is approximately octahedra. Three of them are nitrogen histidines. Fourth one, now it is not a hydroxo, instead it is a oxo bridge. So fourth coordination site is an oxygen from an oxo bridge since the hydrogen is now taken away by the dioxygen which is bound to the iron B. 5th and 6th coordination sites are again occupied by oxygens coming from aspartate and glutamate respectively. Iron B, it has a coordination number of 6. The 6th coordination site is now occupied by a dioxygen which is converted into a peroxide once it binds to one of the metallic centers. So how does it happen? We can see how is the hydroxo bridge converting into an oxo bridge. At first the dioxygen comes and binds to the iron B which has only a coordination number of 5. Once the dioxygen binds the coordination number is shifted to 6. Slowly the dioxygen is converted into peroxo form. In deoxy form the two irons were found to be present in plus 2 oxidation state high spin. Once it is converted into an oxy form both irons are converted into low spin plus 3 oxidation states. Those two electrons are transferred into dioxygen which converts into a peroxo form. Now once dioxygen binds to one of the irons, slowly a hydrogen bond will be established with the hydrogen of the hydroxo bridge. As this hydrogen bond becomes stronger, this hydrogen will slowly shift on to this oxygen where this hydroxo bridge loses the hydrogen and is converted into an oxo bridge which still maintains a hydrogen bonding with the hydrogen of the hydroperoxide. 
the numbers that are given are referring to the number of amino acids present in this side chains. So 101 amino acids present in this side chain, 73 amino acids, 77 and so on. Here it is given as 106, 58, 25 and 54. The same also continue in the oxyhemerythrin which has not been given. When the dioxygen is bound, one important thing we have to check is the stability which comes for the iron dioxygen binding and also what is the bonding mode. In this case we can see that the bonding mode is end on terminal and also the stability for this iron dioxygen binding which has been converted into peroxide is coming from a hydrogen bonding with a oxo bridge. So whether it is a superoxo or a peroxo form can be conferred from vibrational spectroscopy where we get a value of around 843 wave numbers. In the beginning videos we have shown the dioxygen binding where different stretching frequencies for the dioxygen have been given. Now we will just see in detail what are the geometrical, magnetic and electronic aspects. Well, coming to the geometrical aspects. As previously discussed, iron A has a coordination number of 6, 3 are nitrogen histidines, 1 is oxygen coming from a hydroxyl bridge and the 5th and 6th are oxygens coming from aspartate and glutamate. The geometry is distorted octahedra, whereas in the case of iron B, the coordination number is only 5, 2 are nitrogens coming from the histidine, 1 is oxygen coming from the hydroxyl and 4th and 5th coordination sites are occupied by the two oxygens coming from aspartate and glutamate giving it a roughly distorted square pyramid geometry. Then coming to the magnetic aspects. Each iron is present in plus 2 oxidation state. Iron A is 6 coordinated high spin whereas iron B is 5 coordinated high spin. There are 4 unpaired electrons in each of the iron but whatever paramagnetic momentum that is expected from the deoxyhemerythrin was not found since there is a weak antiferromagnetic coupling present between the two iron centers. In the absorption or the electronic spectrum no bands can be found and deoxyhemerythrin is found to be colorless. So one important aspect that I'd like to show in the two structures are in the case of deoxyhemerythrin we have shown that the distance between the two irons is little bit longer when compared with that of the oxyhemerythrin. It is because in deoxy form the two irons are in plus 2 oxidation state whereas in oxy form the oxidation state is raised to plus 3. So the attractive forces increase and the distance between the two irons reduce. This has a greater importance when it comes to the magnetic property in the oxyhemerythrin form. Now here we will see the oxyhemerythrin where uh, the geometry for iron A it is the coordination number 6 3 are histidine nitrogens the other 3 are oxygens coming from the oxo bridge aspartate and glutamate respectively so the geometry around iron A is nearly octahedra when it comes to the iron B even the coordination number in iron B is also 6 iron B is in oxygen rich environment 4 are oxygen whereas only 2 are nitrogens one oxygen coming from the oxo, the other two oxygens coming from aspartate and glutamate and uh, the last oxygen is coming from a peroxo. So again around iron B the geometry is nearly octahedra. Now in this case we see that there is a octahedral environment around iron and also octahedral environment around iron B, iron A and iron B and these are the two octahedra which share a common triangular face. So there is a name given for a structure where the two octahedra share a common triangular face, such a structure is referred as a confacial bioctahedra. Well, coming to the magnetic aspects, iron A and B are now converted into iron in plus 3 oxidation state, both are low spin and also both are 6 coordinated. Since both are iron 3, they come much closer to one another, antiferromagnetic coupling interactions will increase. Since the antiferromagnetic coupling greatly increase, though there are two unpaired electrons, one in each iron, we find it to be diamagnetic. The simplest reason for this is a very strong antiferromagnetic coupling existing between the two iron present in plus 3 oxidation state. 
from deoxy form as it enters into oxy form a high spin iron is converted into a low spin iron this is referred to as a spin crossover so we simply abbreviate it as SCO spin crossover this is a spin crossover which is induced not by temperature instead it is induced by a ligand so we are simply calling it as a ligand induced spin crossover had it been induced by temperature we call it as a TISCO thermal induced spin crossover which we see in some iron compounds well this is about the magnetic aspects coming to the absorption or the electronic spectrum oxyhemerythrin is found to be in purple red or violet pink colored two peaks can be seen in the absorption spectra one at 350 nanometer and uh, the other at 455 nanometer and the reason for the color is a ligand to metal charge transfer transition which occurs from the peroxo into iron 3 with a d5 configuration well whether it is diamagnetic or not a confirmation also comes from the esr spectroscopy or epr spectroscopy where oxyhemerythrin is found to be epr or esr silent this is about hemerythrin.